In this video, I want to talk a little bit more about feathers um, and actually paper. So um, here you see this is my big long turkey feather that was the biggest quill I had. And I've written, I wrote on in that video, I wrote on brown paper with ink in this quill. And the paper was um, absorbing a little bit too much ink. And that is a huge turkey feather quill. It really is. And um, when I've been looking at what's available online to buy, the longest turkey feathers they seem to have is about 14 inches, and this one is about 16 and a half. So this was one of the big male turkeys um, pulling out a feather or losing a feather somewhere. I think I found this in the front yard. Um, but yesterday I went to the beach and I got uh, seagull feathers. And um, living on Cape Cod, you know, seagulls are everywhere. Um, so they're more common. And I was a little disappointed. We couldn't stay as long as I wanted to. I wanted to be able to go through the marsh that was at the beach where we were and uh, look for hawk feathers because there are red-tailed hawks that hunt at the beach. And um, I wanted a crow, I wanted crow feathers, I wanted hawk feathers, and seagull feathers, and we didn't have enough time. We did find all of these. Um, these are all seagulls except for the big turkey feather. And I was disappointed because I said, oh, these are all small. But I'm just sitting here planning a project that I have to use notebook paper, or I want to use notebook paper for, um, simply because of the type of project. And if you're going to think about writing with quills all the time, here's what is actually a good thing from yesterday's feather hunt. Here are two long, they're about, um, about 12 or 13 inches long, seagull feathers. Now, I could cut a nice, um, fine calligraphy nib out of that by taking quite a bit off, but it would, it would be either a fine or a medium nib. If I took very little off, I could probably even get a broad nib out of that. So there's your average seagull feather that I was looking for. And you can see <clears throat> I got quite a few small ones. And I found, yesterday I found some more turkey feathers. Um, but anyway, so here I am disappointed. And then when I realized that I really want to use... Um, notebook paper, the whole um, mechanism in a quill pen is that the hollow quill can hold the ink. Now, I did see the other day another website, a woman who does calligraphy for a living, I guess, um, and she uses them upside down when she writes. But aside from that, I'll show you that in a minute, this is a, let me get the ruler, this is about a 5 inch or a 6 inch seagull feather, but because of the size of the quill, I can cut this into, you know, let's say a fairly narrow nib, and because it's not going to hold as much ink in the hollow area as the larger feathers, it's not going to release too much ink to the paper. So this is where paper comes in and choosing which quill or which pen for which project. So that is uh, six and a half inches long. In other words, when you're shopping for quills and, or looking for them, if you go out and look for them like I do, this is what I thought I needed, and this is really what I needed. And um, so seven inches long, but where is it? This one, I think it's this one, is also about seven inches long and has a much bigger quill. 
So, when you go feather hunting, you really have to pick up anything you see and then bring it home and before you cut it or or you should have at least a general idea of what what you want the pen to do and what kind of paper you're going to be using. I'm heading for notebook paper and brown paper because it's recyclable. Um, I may even end up writing on fabric for the most part. So with all of that, the finer nib and the more controlled ink flow, the better. So this then becomes something that even though I can write with it on many papers, I have to now look at um, making sure the slit in, the t in this area, the top, is cut correctly so that I'm not releasing all that ink at once. Um, now, this is how she writes. She holds the quill like that and writes like that. I don't do it that way. I write like this. I think it's a personal preference. When you hold it upside down, you are at least able to see whether or not you're going to get a blog. But when I do it like this, I want to make sure that I have already cut the nib where I don't have to pay attention to that. In other words, if you pay attention to how you cut the nib and what feather you're using and what ink you're using and what paper you're using, these should write as easily as any other commercially made pen.